Well, certainly one of the strong points of EdSight is the way in which it aligns with the, uh, our state assessment. And so for us, that's the Smarter Balance um, assessment. Um, first off, it, it is when teachers um, create assessments and if they, if they select standards in those as they create them, it is really helpful to measure how students are doing on a particular standard or assessment target. Um, I feel like the questions themselves much more closely align to the rigor of the SBAC questions that they take. The, the question types are virtually identical, um, which is a, a huge selling point for us and very helpful to our students. We like to say the assessment is our roadmap to rigor here, and so when we build assessments, they, they should dictate how deep students understand or know how far they need to go with a particular standard, whether that be a math or a language arts or history, social science, whatever it may be. Um, and having an assessment system like EdSight that is at that same rigor level uh, just takes a lot of pressure off, I think, us as, as the creators of those assessments. EdSight aligns very well to the end of the year state assessments. The structure of their problems even look very similar to the release questions we've seen. They use a lot of the same tools like the highlighting, the notepad, pause feature, um, strike through, having the chance to do multiple choice, multiple select, graphs. So it has all the tools that they will need at the end of the year. Well, with EdSight, our students have been able to get multiple exposures to how our state assessments are, are delivered. Um, a lot of what EdSight uh, does is the question stems that we use and the type of testing um, assessments we use are very similar, if not exactly the same as what they would see on the SPAC. So with that, we are able to kind of look and see, okay, if a student is doing well or not doing so well, is we could pinpoint what may be the issue or what may be the success. Um, another thing is uh, with data chats with our, our students, students are able to see, okay, I'm doing well on this standard, but not so well on this. I might be struggling with this type of question because maybe it's just a vocabulary word. When we are getting the students ready for SBAC, we use the item types that are in there to assess our students and then know how to go back and reteach if they need it before testing at the end of the year. Our teams use EdSight primarily for common formative assessments. Um, we utilize the CASP system for um, large interim assessments, the bigger kind of interim assessment blocks that the state has released in California and those have been very helpful for us in creating curriculum and uh, monitoring student growth. But we need to assess a lot on a, on a weekly or sometimes even we have common formatives in, in some of our subjects that are daily or close to daily. And so we've turned to EdSight for those common formative assessments. The teams will create those often times collaboratively uh, with where they'll discuss questions but then have one person create and then share that with the rest of the team and then all students will take that assessment and then they'll use the data systems and reports in EdSight to analyze their results and make their decisions for next steps. We'll get together as a PLC, um, come up with uh, questions that or basically with the standards that we need to assess and then we create our assessments. We come together and we, we have a consensus, this is a great question, are they similar to the ones that they see as they get assessed at the end of the year? And we build our assessments and um, test them so that we can see where their gaps are as well. My team uses EdSight every week. We um, use common formative assessments, so we build them together, we look at questions, and the ability to share and mark it as a common assessment so that way we can collect the data has been very beneficial for our team. For every single department, we have what's called focus standards where we want to make sure that students are meeting those standards within an, a unit. So we would use EdSight as a way for us to construct and create formative assessments for us to be able to see how students are progressing. And also that will influence our decisions moving forward with how we want to um, deliver our instruction. One of the major impacts um, on using EdSight is our ability to be able to tell a story for each of our, our students. Here at Sequoia, um, our students go through a number of different teachers and we want all of our teachers to be able to see how our students are doing when it comes to literacy, reading, comprehension, writing. And with EdSight, any teacher can go in and take a look at it, see how um, a student is performing when it comes to uh, citing evidence or writing um, narratives, things like that. 
The impact of using EdSci with my students is that they can get immediate feedback. So for example, if they're taking a CFA on a certain standard, after they take the um, assessment, they can see whether they did good or bad, and they want to do good, so they will look for that at the end, and that's a very good tool to have. The impact EdSight has had on my students is the, they've had to learn how to take an assessment online, which is very different from taking an assessment on paper pencil. Um, even just using their scratch paper to put the correct answer in has been a transition for them because sometimes they'll even type it in wrong. So the ability to practice all year long has been really beneficial for them.